This year's 2023 Traverse Stakes at Saratoga promises to be an epic battle of the country's best three-year-olds, including last year's two-year-old champion Forte, Kentucky Derby winner Mage, Preakness winner National Treasure, and Belmont Stakes winner Archangelo. We've gathered opinions, analyses, and predictions from Hall of Fame trainers, former Travers winning trainers, plus other very knowledgeable racing insiders. The winner of this race will potentially enter the Premier Breeders' Cup Classic later this year and be eligible for Horse of the Year honors. I'm here with Hall of Famer super trainer D. Wayne Lucas. This is going to be amazing Travers this year. Tell me a little bit about your perception of it. Well, what happened, I think, in the Triple Crown, these guys were trying to find out the talent in these three-year-olds. And the Derby had a full field, and it dropped off considerably for the Preakness. The Preakness was uh, a good race, but not, you know, a bunch of all the stars. And so here we come. We come all the way full cycle, and we get the Traverse, and they all show up. So this is a, a really special race this year. And it's a definitive race probably in tournament to determine the best three-year-old in the country. I think when the dust settles on Saturday, the winner of the Traverse will probably be the best three-year-old, maybe on the way towards the championship of some kind. That horse probably will be prominent also in, in the Breeders' Cup Classic because history says that the three-year-olds late in the fall always show up in the classic and make it better so watch out here is a really good bike we're here with hall of fame trainer todd pletcher uh, amazing history amazing accomplishments todd how do you maintain your high level of performance and uh, passion for the sport it's ongoing well i'm first first and foremost you need the horses and uh, you know we've been blessed with some really great clients that are giving us the opportunity to train some really talented horses so you know like in a lot of situations, you're only as good as your players. If you're a head coach of a football team or a basketball team, you can have all the X's and O's down pat, but you need that athlete out there performing, and we've been fortunate enough to have some really high-level horses. you got two horses in the Travers. you got Forte and you have Tapit Trice. I know it's exciting for you. Is it as much exciting uh, as it is uh, nerve-wracking, or is it a combination of both? No, I mean, you always get a little butterflies around these big events, you know, and that, that's what makes it exciting. But, uh, you know, we just try to stay focused on preparing the horses to run the best they can. And, uh, you know, it's been kind of an interesting me with all the all the rain we've had and, you know, kind of juggling some schedules and things like that, make it a little, little more uh, nerve-wracking at times. But uh, we're happy we've got two talented Colts uh, coming up to the race in good order. It appears that this race has some of the strongest talent in many Travers. Is that accurate? Right now, if everyone stays on course, you got, you know, you got the two-year-old champ in Forte. You've got the the Derby winner with Mage. You've got the Preakness winner. You got the Belmont winner. Um, you know, it looks like everyone's showing up, and uh, you know, should make it a, a heck of a race. We're here with Super Trainer uh, Gary Contessa, and he's going to give us uh, his perspective on what's coming up with uh, this year's amazing Travers to be. Well, I think we have two of the top three-year-olds in the country are going to show up for the Travers. And in my opinion, Archangelo and Forte are the two best three-year-olds. So this race is shaping up to be a showdown between the two. And it might actually, it might actually set us on the right path for the best three-year-old of the year, the Eclipse Award. I think this could lay the groundwork for the, this year's Eclipse Award for three-year-old gold. And what my feeling is Forte has always been the best three-year-old in the country this year, but Archangelo was never in doubt. I was watching the Belmont Stakes, and that horse was never in doubt that he wasn't going to win that race. So this race, I think Forte is the best three-year-old in the country, but I do believe that Archangelo could give him a run for his money. So I think Forte. I'm here at Saratoga with Gina Antonucci, and... Uh the overnight success that took years to become the overnight success, but she's got one of the top horses in the, in the Travers. Gina, it's, it's uh, great to have an opportunity to speak to you. What does it feel like just to get to this point in your life and your career? I think you just keep working every day. And when you have an opportunity to show up, you basically just try and steward it the best you can and stay out of the way and listen to the horse as best we can. So it's been 
great opportunity, obviously, and, and being able to work with this kind of horse is pretty awesome. Your horse, uh, Archangelo, is by Arrogate, and I saw that uh, Arrogate won the Travers in 2016. I would covered that, so maybe we'll have the same success here, I hope. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I know you're, uh, you're a favorite emotionally because people like the backstory and how hard you've worked to get here, and it's not an overnight success. This is tough business. Um, this perhaps is one of the most difficult uh, competitions only because, not that it's tough, you got the best horses in the country all at this one race. I, I'm just thankful that I'm not running in the race. So it's, uh, you know, he, Archangelo is great. Uh, we had our final prep, shall we say, uh, a couple of days ago, and that was pretty, you know, routine situation. So that worked out well for us. And uh, went back to the track today. He's happy. And my job is to keep his feet on the ground the next week and uh, get a side on his back on Saturday. I'm here at Saratoga with one of the great trainers here, David Duggan. How do you see this Travers shaping up, David? It's an interesting race, but I've been a fan of Forte for the longest time. Um, obviously, you can make a case for three or four others. Um, you know, um, Mage has been consistent. Um, you know, Disarm has been consistent. But I think that the bottom line is my favorite is obviously Forte, and that's who I would be betting on from uh, layman's terms. I'm here with Philip Antonacci, Saratoga uh, Racetrack, uh, prominent uh, horse industry racing family. He's the branch of the thoroughbred side, and uh, Philip's a budding new superstar to be right here. He's done very well already just uh, since opening day at Saratoga. Phil, just give me a quick rundown uh, of uh, who you got, and I also want you two cents on what you think's coming up to shaping up for the Travers. Yeah, so... Uh so we're here at Saratoga. We got 15 stalls up here. Uh, it's been a good start to the meet. Um, had a couple, two winners the first week, and then uh, we just missed out on on two other winners that just got closely beaten. Uh, it's been a good good go for us. Got some nice horses. Uh, got old solid horse called Fauci. That's that uh, he's going to race next week. It looks like he got a great chance. And uh, another horse called Monet Never, who uh, who won on uh, opening weekend, is coming back to any other than so. Uh, and you got some nice two-year-olds as well, so just uh, taking our time, being patient with them, and, and they're coming soon. What do you think about the Travers coming up? Yeah, I think it's a great race. I think, uh, obviously, you got uh, the Belmont winner in there and the Derby winner. Uh, I'm sure Baffert's going to have something. So uh, I know that Archangelo horse has been training very well, and but it's, uh, that mage, he always shows up as well. So uh, I think it's it's a loaded race, and Brad Cox has got that uh, the, the Saudi crown horse that raced really well, and, of course, you got Forte, so... Uh, I think it's a really stacked race and a deep race, and you can almost make a case for anybody to win in there. I'm, I'm here with the Delgados, working in the rain, as we say. This is Gloria Saratoga. Not every day is the most beautiful day in the world, but uh, uh, today's a good day because they, they've got a super horse. Uh, hopefully this coming weekend they're going to do well with a horse named Mage. What's it like all of a sudden having all the spotlight? Um, it's an amazing feeling. Uh getting used to it and well we take it in a good humble way so it's it's it's, a, it's all plus nothing negative about it and it's a wonderful family experience father son sharing the experience together right yeah age of wisdom and uh, all the youth and energy exactly that what do you think pops que piensa tu de 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 la combinación de la juventud con el con la Experiencia, experiencia tuya. Yeah, it's it's the good mix, <laughs> good mix. Depending on the day, depending on the day. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. He is the boss. <laughs> yeah, right. I work. Okay, you work for your son. Yes. Well, he no, he's, he's trying to say that I am the boss and he is the one who works. Yes. <laughs> it's which a good thing which is not true it's good that's going to keep you healthy and yeah, you're going to yeah, live no a long problem. life that way he can no take problem. all the stress I have a problem doing that. No. I am amazing but how do they say mucho suerte yeah. mucha suerte okay we're here with Billy Mott preparing a horse for the Travers one of the great trainers of all times in the Hall of Fame he's got a horse uh, entered named Scotland Billy what convinced you that this is the time to enter this horse well, we've gone, you know, a step at a time. We've gone through a couple of his conditions, and and he had a nice prep here on the racetrack on at Saratoga Racetrack uh, around two turns, and he, he 
you know, was able to handle that uh, challenge and, and he seems to be doing well since that race. So, we, uh, you know, we've got a couple of nice breezes in him so far. He'll breeze again on Sunday and uh, hopefully he'll be up, up to the challenge. We know there's going to be some nice horses in there, obviously. And this will be the biggest challenge, of course, of his, of his career. But uh, we think it's time to, to see if he can step up and match these other horses. And you've partnered once again with uh, a jockey who brings you some good success, Junior Alvarado, on this horse. Yeah, Junior's been a, a regular stable rider for us. He rides, you know, probably 50% of the horses for us. And, uh, you know, he, he's ridden Scotland. He's got a, a good record on him. He's won a couple of races on him already. So, you know, hopefully we can get the job done again. Last question. Cody's wish disappointed you a little bit with a second, but uh, or third, I think. But um, I understand you're going to change up distance and uh, uh, hopefully he's headed towards the Breeders' uh, Cup at some point. Give well, me yeah, we were, that. we were reaching out last time. I mean, we reached out at nine furlongs. Uh, it was kind of an unproven distance for him, a distance that he had never won at before. But, you know, being here in Saratoga, the Whitney, probably one of the most prestigious races on the calendar for anybody. Uh, we wanted to give it a try and, and we didn't win, but we're going to, you know, we'll back him up to the seven furlong distance and and the flat mile distance and, and give that a try, try to get him, put him back in his game. We're here with super jockey Junior Alvarado. He's up on Scotland for the Travers. Tell me briefly what an opportunity this is. You're up against the biggest horses in the country right now. Yeah, you know, we're going to be running against good horses. You know, the, the Belmont winner, the Travers winner, probably even the Preakness winner. But, you know, I, I like my horse. My horse is coming up, you know, run, running good races. You know, I think he's developing right, you know, at the right time and... And, you know, like I said, I mean, he ran a big race last time in the curling, and I think, you know, we, we, we're going to have a good shot in the Travers. You rode Cody's wish and a little bit of a disappointment on a two-turn race, but I understand that you guys are regrouping and thinking about a one-turn and coming back uh, strong. So uh, what's, what's your uh, opinion of all this and how the horse is doing? Yeah, you know, he, he, you know, he didn't probably run his race, to be honest. You know, even though, like, for me, it was very hard to take if it was a two-turn or he just wasn't his day. But, you know, we're regrouping now and probably, you know, I know Mr. Mop is thinking to probably go in the Botpur, which is, I think, is seven furlong and, and aqueduct. So that might be like a race, you know, shooting for him. And then after that, hopefully the, the previous copy, if everything goes well. What do you feel more pressure as a jockey, the Travers or uh, Cody's Wish? Uh, God, Cody's Wish, for sure. Is this, you know, that's a horse that everybody knows him and, in you know, it's just... I would love to just to keep winning with him, just to keep that beautiful story going, and 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 you know. But you know, sometimes we have hiccups in life, and and I think you know, hopefully we can bounce back from that. We're here with uh, Carlos Martin, one of the super trainers within the New York Racing Association here at Saratoga Park. Carlos, the Travers is coming up, one of the biggest races of the year, midsummer uh, triple crown type of type of race, best horses in the world. How do you size this race up? Inside a group of uh, horses, Doc. Thank you for having me. I think it's going to be uh, something you haven't seen in a while. You have the uh, Preakness winner, National Treasure. You have the Derby winner, Madge. And you have the Archangel, the Belmont Stakes winner. All three horses that have competed in different Triple Crown races, all the winners getting together. So that's exciting in itself. And then to throw a little extra spice to the mix, you have the champion two-year-old for Todd Pletcher and Mike Rapoli Forte, uh, who was disappointing being scratched in the uh, Derby and uh, ran a valiant race in the Belmont and another great comeback effort in a very small tactically uh, against the against the grain win and the uh, Jim Dandy. So between Forte, Madge, Archangelo, National Treasure, it's shaping up to be an historic Travers. Here with uh, Hall of Fame, very well-known uh, trainer, Nick Zito. Nick, how do you see this year's Travers sizing up? Very exciting. Very exciting, Travers. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be interesting because, uh, you know, the controversy with Todd Fletcher's horse and Michael Foley's horse is, past and he obviously is a great horse and those horses that ran in the gym Danny were very excited and of course the Derby winner Mage is a very consistent horse. I think it's just going to be a beautiful, a great travel. I'm here with extraordinary trainer Dale Romans. Dale, 2015, you beat American Pharaoh. You came here and, and uh, clobbered him in the Travers. Uh, 
briefly, what kind of experience was that for you? No, that was a good day. That was a very good day. You know, he was a great horse. Nobody talks about the five times he beat us, but that's probably my historic, most historic win. Everybody loves to talk about it this time of year. But one of the best things was walking back after the race. With, I walked back with the horse. All the people cheering for him. It, and I thought they'd all be booing him because he just beat America's horse. And then getting back to the barn, and at the end of the barn where we're sitting today, Leroy Jolly standing there waiting on me, giving me a big hug, one of my childhood heroes. Welcome to the Travers Club. Well, we have a new year, and it's a, it's a packed uh, group in the Travers this year. How do you see that shaping up? I don't know. It's a bunch of good horses. Of course, this is a graveyard of champions, so anything can happen in this race.